Hi, and welcome to the Tamarack Jacket Video Sew Along. I'm Jen, the owner and founder of Grainline Studio Patterns, and in this series, I'll be walking you step by step through the process of sewing up this pattern. I know a lot of you are joining in, and I thought it might be fun to create a sew along specific social media hashtag. So let's use hashtag Tamarack together to support each other on this quilted jacket journey. The Tamarack was originally released back in 2016 and was updated last month to include our 14 to 30 size range. In addition to that, we released the Tamarack add-on that allows you to add a hood, collar, or patch pockets to your coat. We'll be covering not only the Tamarack jacket pattern in the Sew Along series, but also the collar, hood, and patch pocket variation pack. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Tamarack pattern, I want to start by going over the pattern details. Designed with the transitional seasons in mind, the Tamarack jacket is a warm and stylish quilted coat perfect for spring and fall layering. Follow one of the two quilting designs included, or design your own to make your Tamarack totally original to you. You'll stay toasty thanks to the inner layer of cotton or wool batting, while welt pockets will keep your belonging safe and your hands warm. Now let's talk about how the Tamarack in 14 to 30 differs from the 0 to 18. The main difference, aside from the fact that the 14 to 30 Tamarack was drafted from scratch from our 14 to 30 block, is the addition of a dart at the bust. Here you can see here, in here. Having a dart allows the Tamarack to fit smoothly and neatly across the bust without overwhelming the lower half of the torso with excess quilted fabric while still accommodating the size D sewing cup. The fact that the dart has been rotated into the arm side keeps the take up small and allows us to utilize a clever construction technique that keeps the three layers of the jacket from becoming bulky and hard to work with and wear. You can see how you can barely even tell there's a dart here. It's very smooth and we'll show you how to achieve that during the sew along. The Tamarack collar is a traditional camp style collar that is fully quilted and bound. Match the fabric to your jacket or use a contrasting fabric to add a pop of additional color. The collar is easy to attach and finish and very cozy to wear. It also works with both views A and B of the original Tamarack jacket pattern. The Tamarack hood is a generous hood that fits perfectly on its own or over a hat without becoming overly bulky. We took care while drafting to make sure the shape allowed for an easy continuation of your quilting design and any piecing you may do from the jacket up to the hood. You can see here. The hood is also finished with binding and works with both views of the Tamarack jacket. In addition to the collar and hood, we've also included instructions on how to create your own fully lined and quilted patch pockets. These pockets are a fun way to add more color or interest to your jacket and are a great alternative to the original welt pockets, giving you more options to create the quilted jacket of your dreams. The first thing you'll need for this sew along is the Tamarack jacket pattern. It's available in our shop, which I'll link in the video description below, along with links to the rest of the tools and supplies mentioned in this section. We offer the Tamarack in both paper and PDF format as well as in both of our size ranges. So you can choose the pattern type and size that's right for you. The collar, hood, and patch pocket add-on is only available as a PDF download. To create your jacket, you'll need a woven fabric for the exterior of the coat, a woven fabric for the interior of the coat, and batting. Light to medium weight cottons, linens, chambres, and blends work well for the shell of the jacket. Since the fabric will be doubled and quilted to a batting, we recommend avoiding anything too heavy as the jacket can become excessively stiff. Here I'm using a cotton and linen blend. It's pretty lightweight. Uh, it's a little heavier than quilting cotton, but still very flexible. And I've used this for a lot of my Tamaracks. These fabrics also work well for the lining. I will be using this printed quilting cotton for the inside of my jacket. I recommend pre-washing your fabrics to keep shrinkage to a minimum. An initial pre-wash will be enough to stop your jacket from shrinking so much that the size changes, but will still allow it to get a bit of that cute crinkle that puffs up the layers and shows off your quilting. 
The possibilities of combinations are virtually endless between the main and lining fabrics. In our samples, we try to show a variety of potential combos by mixing neutrals, prints, pops of color, etc. Between the layers of the main and lining fabric is a layer of batting. Batting is the material used to create the quilt by adding thickness and providing warmth to your jacket. We recommend using a high quality batting in cotton, wool, bamboo, or a blend of those fibers. The weight and thickness of batting is measured by loft. Thinner batting has a lower loft and thicker batting has a higher loft. Choose the thickness of your batting based on how warm you want your coat to be. The reason we recommend high quality batting in natural fibers is because after you've spent all this time making your quilted jacket, you'll want to make sure it stands up to the wear and tear. Not only is higher quality batting less likely to shrink in the wash, the fibers are more likely to stay together and not turn into a lumpy mess over the life of your coat. This is a cotton batting by Quilter's Dream, and you have to pull pretty hard to get it to start separating. Cheaper quality battings, you can just pull the fibers right off. High quality batting has also been treated to reduce excessive shrinking. So like your fabric, it will puff up nicely, but your coat will remain the same size you intended it to be. The last reason we recommend a higher quality batting is it gives you more flexibility with your quilting pattern. Your batting will come with a recommendation of distance between the quilting lines. And typically the higher quality the batting is, the further apart these lines can be. You'll need a twin size if you're buying by the package, or if your local shop has it by the yard, you can use the lining yardage quantity for your amount. You'll need a small piece of fusible interfacing if you're creating a tamarack with the welt pocket. I like to use either a woven or trico interfacing in a slightly lighter weight than my fabric. So if I was using a quilting cotton, you can see this is like medium lightweight. This is what I would use. You'll also need thread to sew up your jacket. I've used both 100% cotton and 100% poly thread for my jackets, and there aren't that many differences. Due to the way the thread is manufactured, I often find that high quality quilting thread passes through the quilt sandwich a bit better without the occasional skip stitch. This is why they make 100% cotton quilting thread in the first place. Um, <laughs> so there's a reason they do make it. Uh, this is because most cotton quilting threads are treated to reduce lint, allowing it to more easily slide through the layers of fabric. If you use a high quality poly thread that has less lint, you'll be just fine. Although it's been treated to reduce this, cotton thread may shrink a bit when washed, so keep that in mind if you prefer a less crinkly jacket. If that's the case, poly thread might be the answer for you. You'll find two types of pins useful while making your tamarack. First off are quilters pins. These are thinner and longer than regular dressmakers pins. You'll be pinning through a ton of fabric, so you'll need something thin and flexible to get the job done. I love these clover flower head pins because they're extra long and thin enough, but not too thin that they bend out of shape easily. Safety pins come in handy while quilting your fabric. You'll use them to pin base your quilt sandwich in place, so things don't slip while you're quilting. You can use whatever regular straight safety pins you have laying around, or if you're into sewing supplies or think you'll be doing a lot of quilting, you can purchase quilter safety pins. These are slightly curved and are much easier to take in and out of the fabric. In addition to pins, you may find Clover Wonder Clips useful for applying the binding to your jacket. Wonder Clips are small spring-loaded clips that hold your binding in place. There are two benefits to these clips when applying your binding. First, it's much easier to clip the binding in place around the outside than it is to pin due to the amount of fabric layers involved at that point. Additionally, if you've decided to hand sew your binding down on the back side, you won't have to worry about a bunch of pins stabbing you while you sew. Since we're basically assembling a quilt here, I like to use either a quilting or microtex machine needle. The tips of these needles are extra pointy allowing them to easily pass through the many layers of fabric and cross quilted stitching lines without snags. These needles are available in a few sizes. For my jacket, I used size 9014. The first sewing machine foot I recommend using for your Tamarack is a walking foot. 
This is going to be a lifesaver for this project, I promise. A walking foot will reduce the tendency of the top layers of fabric to move through the machine at a slightly lower rate and ensures that your fabric doesn't slip around and pucker or become misaligned. The second foot I recommend is a standard machine foot as there are parts of the welt pocket that are slightly difficult to get accurately sewn with the bulk of the walking foot. I like to use my machine's quarter inch foot, which Bernina calls the patchwork foot, because of the accuracy it provides, but I recommend using whatever you're used to. We recommend two kinds of hand sewing needles. First, a longer quilter's basting needle used to put in the initial basting lines prior to quilting and mark your welt pocket placement. Second is a regular hand sewing needle to slip stitch your pocket welt and binding if you choose to hand sew that in place. The scissors I find useful to have on hand for this project are my Ginger bend handle shears. I use these to cut out my fabric, clip, snip, and more. I use embroidery scissors to grade my seam allowances and do small trimming. Thread snips live next to each of my machines at all times. I couldn't sew without them. I also use a rotary cutter to cut my bias strips. You can do this with scissors, but it's definitely much easier and more accurate to use a rotary. You'll need a tape measure to take your measurements, as well as lay out your pattern pieces for cutting. Having an 18 inch gridded ruler is handy and often helpful when laying out your pattern pieces and making sure that things like pockets are square to the front. A thick plastic ruler intended for rotary use will come in handy while cutting your bias strips. The thick plastic makes it so you can't nick the ruler while you cut. It's also harder to nick your hands, which is very important. You may also want a seam gauge for measuring while sewing. You'll need a marking tool of some kind to trace out your pattern onto fabric. Two of my favorite marking utensils are a mechanical chalk pencil. They have fine lead that comes in multiple colors and is washable. I also love this Clover Chalk liner but just keep in mind that the color chalk on these is not washable. It's especially important to note during this project that while a lot of people like friction pens, they may not be appropriate for the Tamarack. These pens are great for anything that's either cut off or trapped in the seam allowance, but keep in mind that due to the way the ink works, the lines will come back in cold weather, so only use that in places that won't show on your finished garment. Since we're making a coat, it's highly probable that it will come in contact with cold weather and you don't want a bunch of lines along your quilting to appear while you're wearing it. You'll also need an iron and an ironing board. I'll be using my Lurastar Smart Eye Ironing System. I really love how light this iron is along with the active board, which sucks the um, steam through the board. Any iron and ironing board you have will be just great. You simply need something to press on and press with. I also like to have a ham and sleeve roll handy for pressing curved bits and sleeves. If you don't have these already, they'll really up your sewing game. The final object you may appreciate having for this project is a bias tape maker. While not necessary, if you prefer working with pre-folded bias tape and are making your own, a bias tape maker will make your life a lot easier. These are super easy to use and come in a variety of widths. As we mentioned earlier, you'll be creating one half inch double fold bias tape, so you'll want a one inch bias tape maker. Now we'll walk you through a few of our sample tamaracks so you can get an idea of what we used and what you might want for your jacket. I'll start with this jacket that we made for our recent 14 to 30 photo shoot. The outer fabric is 100% cotton. It's called line work heavyweight in saddle. It's by Alexia Abeck for Ruby Star. It's a little bit of a nubby cotton. It has really nice drape and hand. Um, and I like how the textures of the different stripes just really show off the coat. We did a fun patch pocket here. And then we lined it with a Robert Kaufman uh, gingham. And this is about the weight of a quilting cotton. For the inside of this jacket, we used um, a 100% cotton batting from Quilter's Dream. It is a select. It's their second highest um, thickness. They have Request, Select, Deluxe, Supreme. Um, so this one is nice. It's nice and warm. 
but soft and not too stiff. For this green version, we use an Essex yarn dyed linen cotton blend. Um, this is from Robert Kaufman and the color is Pickle. It's really nice. I like the way that when you wash it, it kind of crinkles up really pretty. Um, and this fabric is a great outer. It's a little bit thicker than quilting cotton um, and has a little bit of a more substantial yarn in the weave. So I think it's just a really pretty option. It has a nice sheen, you can see. And then for the inside, we used a quilting cotton. This is by Carolyn Friedlander, and it's 100% cotton uh, Robert Kaufman fabric as well. We used the same Quilter's Dream 100% uh, cotton select weight batting on the inside, and it's just a really nice weight. It's lightweight. You could wear this underneath um, another jacket if you need something a little warmer or it's nice on its own. This jacket here is also Essex linen. And I think a one nice thing to show off with this coat is it does drape a bit differently, even though it's quilting cotton, Essex linen, and the same uh, lining because the quilting pattern kind of breaks up the coat more. So it allows more places for the jacket to kind of uh, bend and move. So that's something to think about too when you're planning out your jacket. So this jacket here is the same chambray on the inside and outside, but I used a wool batting on the inside. And it's puffy, but very thin. And I find it breathes a lot better than the 100% cotton batting, um, you know, as wool will do. <laughs> So if you're in a climate where you maybe need a jacket in the evening, um, I find that this is a great option. If I'm walking around a lot, I find I don't overheat in it. Um, it's just really nice. And then this is the last tamarack I want to show you. This is chambray on the inside and outside, but I used a super lightweight 100% um, cotton batting. So this is Quilter's Dream Request and hopefully you can see it's a lot thinner and lighter. This definitely fits underneath another jacket. I use it as sort of um, a layering piece underneath a jacket that's maybe not quite as warm. And hold on. These two jackets are the same fabric, just in a different colorway. The only difference is that this has a thicker batting. So you can really see the difference between these two jackets. Okay, so that is it for day one of the Tamarack Video Sew Along. I hope you found the information useful and you're just as excited as I am to sew up your Tamarack. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. Our next lesson will focus on choosing a size and basic pattern adjustments. So make sure you subscribe to our channel via the link below and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.